The world of home servers are becoming more easier by the day. We had first Zima OS that I will show you guys how easy it is to actually follow, how easy it is to use, how easy it is to do everything. Now we're getting a new competitor, Umbrella OS. And in my opinion, this is even easier than Zima OS. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, when you first install the OS, this is the first thing that you're going to see. This is the home screen, let's call it like this. And here you have some recommended apps. You have here home, app store, files, settings, uh, live stacks and stuff like that, live usage. And this one is the widgets for your home screen, but you didn't have any widgets now. So let's go back home. And when we're going back home, we can either select an application from here or we can just go to app store here. And then we can select an application to install. Now, simple apps like, for example, Jellyfin, all you have to do is click install and it will install. Now, this is running on a Raspberry Pi at the moment, Raspberry Pi 5. You can install this on a normal computer, 86 and uh, have it from there. But I'm running it as Raspberry Pi because it's, it's not as powerful and I want to see, you know, what kind of performance we can get from here. Now, installing Jellyfin, it's a simple click. And I believe, in my opinion, installing Jellyfin in place is now the easiest standard way to install on all devices. It's either a copy from a link with a curl or just install from an app store, tell the location, that's it. The difference is when I open Jellyfin here and it didn't finalize, so we have to wait a little bit. Again, I'm using a Raspberry Pi. How you can see, I have an Umbrella OS because I already did all of these ones and it's saying that, you know, I can't connect to it. So let's go into delete it. Search for undefined. And here we are. Now, you, I got that error only because I installed them previously and now I have to delete them so I can show you guys everything. I was doing some testing and I couldn't believe to be fair how easy it is. Now, here is the typical setup, right? So you put a password, a username, and you select Jellyfin. Now, the beauty of it is that it automatically gives permission to folders. So, for example, I can go just go to download, movies, click select. I already have a recording of mine from a video of YouTube there. And I put it here, United Kingdom, next, next, and that's it. So now let's just log into Plex. And how you can see, I have my movie over here or in my scenario, my YouTube recording. Now click and play, that's it. Installing Plex is so easy and it's working, in my opinion, it's actually working faster on Umbrella OS than OMV, the operating system that I was using before to actually make my Raspberry Pi a NAS. But how you can see, literally on click. Now, how I said, installing Jellyfin right now, it's kind of like a standard, you know, everybody knows how to do it. But before we jump in, here, how you can see, because we installed the first app, this is the actual home screen that you're going to see. So we have some storage, we have the, you know, some stats, CPU and stuff like this. We have memory RAM and here now we can go to widgets. But then we have, and we can actually change it with other things that we want. The more application you install, the more things you will be able to see here. Now let's go back into the app store and let's install something. Something that is harder in my opinion is Nestcloud. Now Nestcloud, after you install it, you have to do all kinds of things and, you know, install MariaDB, set it up and stuff like that. It's, in my opinion, it's much harder to install than other application. But on Umbrella OS, <laughs> now how we can see is fully installed. Now we click open and you will get a username and a password. So copy this password because Jesus and the username is Umbrella. So we're going to open and again, didn't load completely. So we're going to hit reload and wait for it to do in the background whatever it's doing there. And here we are. Now we're going to put Umbrella, not Umbrella, and copy or paste the password. Log in. And that's it. Literally, this is it. Now you have your Nest Cloud ready to go. Already set it up. All permission did. Every single thing, it's done. That's it. Now, another sort of application that I do like in this one, and I saw a lot of people, especially when I'm putting my, uh, how you call it, when I'm making a video about home servering or a new operating system, most of the people will ask me, how do you install the R apps? And it's super hard in this one because you already have it here. So for example, if I click here, click install, it will already tell me this application require this application. 
So I have to install first transmission, click install here. After this one in install, I can install the other one. So it's it's so easy, it's telling you, hey, listen, this app will not work without this one. This one, it does work. So you, it's telling you every single thing that you have to do. It's, it's so easy, I can't even describe it. So now we're going back, click install, install, and that's it. We now have this one installed. It's, it's so easy, I think everybody can do it. Every single person who wants to make a, a NAS or a home server right now, they have no excuses of saying it's too hard. So how you can see now I have all the apps here. So if I click on, on it, again, you have to wait a little bit after, but now it's done. You just put your details here, create a username and password, and that's it. It's that easy. Now, other things that you can do, no more shares and stuff like this, you click, not on the, I'm sorry, I always confuse these two icons. I go, let's say I'm my entire folder, right click, and I'm already sharing, so let's do like this. Right click, share over network. Do you wanna share? Yes. And here, it already tells you how to access it on macOS, on Windows, on iOS, or other umbrella OS. So I have a macOS, so how do you access it? You open Finder, and press Command K, or you just go here and to go and click connect to server. Now you put the SMB that is telling you, I mean, this is so easy, like literally so easy, right? You paste it here. Username is Umbrella and the password is this password. So click connect, but I already saved it. So for me, I saved it in my keychain when I was using it. So I'm connected. It's so easy. Now use this folder as a time backup. It's telling you how to do it. So you can use it as a, a time machine backup. This device, this OS is literally amazing. Now you can add another device over the network. You can do all kinds of things. The only thing that I'm not a big fan, and I don't know if I'm, I'm stupid or there's no way you can change it. Now, you know how they give you a, a password. I have a password for signing in to my next cloud. I have a password for everything. I can't find a way to actually change this password to something that I want. So this is show default credentials. I have it here, but how do I change these credentials? I have no idea. I went into settings, so let's just throw settings a little bit. We have account, change name and change password, wallpaper behind me, so you can change the wallpaper behind you. If you want to connect via Wi-Fi, you can connect directly via Wi-Fi. 2FA, you have it here, backups, Migrant Assistant, so transfer all the apps and data from a Raspberry Pi to Umbrella Home. Language, troubleshoot, device information, so here you get device information, but it's a Raspberry Pi 5. Advanced settings and check for updates. Now we can go to open in advanced settings and we have terminal, beta, Cloudflare, remote for Tor, and factory reset. I can't find a way to actually change this default password. Now, if we're going back into files, for example, because you will expect that here is where you will find the settings. I can't find any settings, any, any nothing. So if I go in here, you can't change it. Now, this is the thing that actually bothers me the most because I won't remember this password. And if, if I'm not at home, I have to connect to server, copy the password and stuff like this, make it worldwide, which maybe there is a way to do it. 100% sure it should be a way to do it because I don't understand how, but I, I can't just find the option. Now, if you right click, you have edit, edit widgets, change the wallpaper and log out. Here is the widgets again, live stats here. You can see what's taking the information, what's eating the most, stuff like this. It's a really amazing operating system, especially for the beginners, super amazing. I mean, you have Edgar, you have everything. Even if you want Cloudflare, to make it public, right? You can use your own Cloudflare. It's everything is installed here. This OS is so amazing that I don't have any words of saying how much I actually recommend to people, especially new people who never tried an operating system like, you know, like a home server and stuff like this, or for those ones who does, are, are sick of uh, information and stuff like this about how to Google online, what copy, what link to copy and stuff like this, like OMV. You have a nice interface, you have everything. You even have, if you don't like the uh, interface here, you have Hallmark, so you can change the actual interface 
of this device. It's so amazing. And yeah, I wanted to show to show you guys this uh, this OS. I wanted to bring a little bit of light to it because I, I didn't saw too many people talking about it. They just in the beginning, all the videos on YouTube are like two years old, one years old and stuff like that. So yeah, this OS, Umbrella OS, it's super amazing. It's free at the moment. And if you have a Raspberry Pi, for example, they don't recommend to install it on a micro SD card. I do have it on micro SD card right now. Don't get me wrong. So everything is installed here on 120 gigabytes of micro SD card, but they don't recommend installing a micro SD card uh, or using external SSD storage. They recommend installing an NVMe or a USB drive because you know, they're longer life and stuff like this. Micro SD cards, they normally have like a, a short period of life, a short period of how many writes they can do and stuff like this. But it still works. OMV is installed on a Raspberry Pi with a microSD card. So everything, most of the people, they use a microSD card. So I don't believe it will be a problem. But this OS is just one click and it works. So yeah, if you're new to home server or if you're trying to, you know, to try, if you want to try, I'm sorry, a home server, or if you're sick of OMV and the way they're doing it and stuff like that, this operating system is perfect. Literally perfect. But yeah, I do hope you like this video. If you do like it, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one.